Yeah, okay, so continuing on from my last video, basically the point is that yes, I know that I do DF Skeptical Point, but if I didn't give uh, some of the technical details or, or you know, constantly um, cite, uh, you know, cite other sources in my, uh, in, my, in my video summaries, or, you know, even encourage people to message me uh, where I can give them further reading or stuff like that, you know, without actually doing that and uh, going into technical detail, you know, I'm not encouraging them to, uh, you know, I'm not giving them a path by which they can try to further educate themselves. You know, it's it's a it's a real pain in the ass, if you'll pardon my saying so, to have to deal with a um, you know a, an ongoing uh, skeptical battle against uh, scientific ignorance when um, you know or or ignorance in the scientific method or or why the heck people believe in you know uh, or you know like it's one of the reasons why people would believe in UFOs and the like and all this sort of thing. But my concern is this: you know, if let's, let's just hypothetically entertain this for a second. You know, um, Dean Radin, in one of his videos, uh, said the stupidity hypothesis, you know, the, the people who are less educated, um, you know, uh, you know, the people who are less educated or less understand how science works are the ones who more believe in ESP. Well, you know, there have been polls where they've been shown that 50% of physicists uh, believe in the possibility of ESP and less than 70, uh, less than 7% of psychologists do um, because of, you know, various different things. Which means that it wouldn't be a necessarily an understanding of science or the known laws of physics for disbelief in uh, psychic phenomena, but maybe a more understanding of how psychology works and uh, where psychic phenomena might be uh, accounted for better by uh, certain psych phenomena. By, by certain uh, already known psych uh, psychological behaviors and the like. But you get my point. The, the point is, is that, you know, um, even regardless of that stupidity hypothesis, even if we entertain that as true, then how do we, um, you know, then how do we as skeptics attempt to counter this? The best thing we've got to do is not only, uh, you know, say this is wrong and why it's wrong, or, you know, there's been a whole bunch of science, you know, or to quote Penn and Teller bullshit on ESP, for example. There's been scientific research for the better part of a century and nothing's been found. I mean, that's a vague statement. You know, it's, it's, a, it's a categorical statement. And, um, you know, to, and, and to say, well, nothing's been found, that's not quite true. What we have is we have a bunch of anomalies, which have been apparently replicated by multiple meta-analyses, meta and... Um, Need further tightening of controls because um, what we've had is we've had uh, we've had further tightening of controls, and uh, we've and you know what we have is we just have a uh, greater increasing probability towards ESP. But on the other hand, there's still quite a few issues that haven't been resolved yet, and we still need to research in these areas to um, you know to say that nothing's been found basically would imply like oh we've done all the research that's necessary to be done. There's no more need to take a look at it. And I'm going, well, no, that's not quite true, because um, in the event, uh, you know, even with the research that's been done, there's, um, you know, there's been uh, newer, uh, you know, even with every new um, further tightening of one previous protocol, a new variable possibly arises in terms of statistical techniques or experimental cues, or there may even be in the process, if we don't replicate, we, might, we may find something new out about, the, about how the mind works in dealing with this sort of thing. That's why skeptic, uh, uh, skeptical parapsychologist Richard Wiseman is doing research on how we uh, think about luck and superstition, like, you know, why the brain believes what it does in some of these areas. Shermer, uh, in, uh, in his skeptic uh, column in Scientific American, talks a lot about, uh, about, how, um, about how belief and evolution and, uh, and, you know, and fair play, you know, like all are rooted in our, in our evolution from our primate ancestors. I mean, like, you know, there's actual good reason to research some of these areas if only to find out more about how the brain works. You know, if we don't find Psy, you know, if we do find Psy, great. We can start looking at, uh, at you know, at, at new implications of a, mo a modifying physical laws as well as psychological. If we don't find it, also great, because we can then find out what the, uh, what the basis of psychological phenomena are, which, uh, which cause belief in this area, or cause us to perceive uh, these supposedly paranormal phenomena when they're in fact something else. Like, we can figure out what they actually are, and from that, understand more about how our human brain works, or how the mind works. You know, who knows, maybe even by doing some of these MRI studies in the process with it, like some of the new parapsychologists are trying to do, we might be able, um, you know, if, if it is a non-psi phenomena, we might be able to find out how more of the brain works in relation to certain conscious phenomena. You know, like, this is a good thing. But, you know, and it's... <sighs> You see what I mean? But I, get, I digress. My point being is that, you know, this is, and this is not the only issue where this has happened. You know, uh, Penn and Teller bullshit have done bad stuff about environmentalism. They've, you know, they've, you know, like I said, they're a pioneering show. They're trying to do, they're, they're trying to tackle a wider range of phenomena. And they're trying to do, uh, you know, they're trying to, you know, advance the pioneering levels. But the thing is, I think that they're not quite far enough. You know, they are a previous generation of skeptic. They're the, they're the generation that Randy, Shermer, Hyman are, you know. 
Hyman said it quite succinct, succinctly, where you know he's you know he's retired now, but he's still constantly criticizing parapsychology because he can't find anyone competent enough to pass the mantle onto. Well, I'm calling a new generation a skeptic now. You know, in the day and age where you know we are constantly evaluating you know more and more technologically, and there seems to be you know a, a, a popular argument like you know where we need you know where science is advancing ever more so. And, you know, we can't afford to stick to just popular arguments. We need a new generation of skeptic, and we need a new generation of skeptical argument. You know, further in depth, more, you know, more technicals. And yes, at the popular level, we use that intro level, but we can't let that be the be-all and the end-all of our arguing style. You know, we can't, we can't just constantly use that day in and day out. We have to toss in bits of, uh, you know, of technical every now and again, and of the latest actual scientific research on any area, we should be keeping ourselves you know, as skeptics in any area or almost every area that we, you know, that uh, where science is advancing, we should at least be at the at the very least at the popular level, and if not, you know, going more into technical detail, we should be at least, uh, you know, we should be looking into, um, you know, we should be looking into uh, what science is actually saying at the at the uh, furthest out levels. So this way we can, uh, you know, in greater detail. So this way we can actually explain it to the uh, public. You know, much like Scientific American does. You know, where they go into. Uh, you know, where they go into detail, you know, not just at a popular level, but they explain a little bit of the technicals of how it goes into it, and then gives encouragement for people to go and look at the original papers themselves or what have you. I mean, you know, the, the you know, and they even show like snippets on some of those Discovery Channel documentaries, say for example, with the latest stuff pertaining to uh, string theory or to time travel or anything like that. They give, uh, they show little snippets of the calculus equations and the like to give people an enticement of, hmm, wonder what that is. You know, it it gives it gives people an, a a leg in, if you will, to start looking at this sort of stuff. But without that, you know, it's it it doesn't really, you know, it doesn't really give a, um, you know, it doesn't really give it a basis or an enticement. It doesn't, it doesn't really, you know, it doesn't really entice people or incite them to, you know, to go look further at this. You know, it doesn't really. It doesn't really provide any encouragement if we don't, you know, if we don't at least provide something to titillate them with, you know. I mean, most of the popular arguments just simply say this is wrong because of this. Like, we've solved it. You know, that's that. And it's sort of like, no. And what we should be looking at is sort of like, this is where the state of the evidence is at right now. You know, there's not really any evidence for this. But on the other hand, here's where the evidence is going. And, you know, you should be, and you should be focused on this. Like, you know, to say, you know, to, to automatically shut it down. You know, as the as a lot of the popular arguments do, you know, it stymies people. It just simply says like, okay, you know, like to say that nothing's ever been found. You know, you know, it's we, you know, there's been, you know, nothing's ever been found, and you know, it's been years, and we've searched for it, you know, and there's nothing been found. You know, what that implies is we've already dealt with this. It's already, you know, it's it's a it's a no go subject. Don't bother with it. You know, not even, you know, and it can create wrong. It can create wrong thought. You know, it can create the wrong impression on a scientific fringe. Um, it'd be like some of the other groups that have been happening. Like, there's been some books coming out of people who've been saying, like, "Oh, many worlds theory of quantum mechanics has been, you know, is contradictory to the laws of uh, to the laws of physics. Therefore, it doesn't work, you know, or it's not proven. It's un it's unfalsifiable, so we shouldn't look into it." And uh, there have been some arguments about string theory's got too many flaws in it, and therefore we shouldn't look at it. Uh, Dr. Lawrence Krauss, for one, um, you know, saying, you know, there's not really a concision, but you know, but I mean, like, look at how they're, you know, I mean. But I mean, look at where we are now. You know, string theory is now actually uh, being a lot closer to being, uh, to being, uh, you know, is, is looking a lot more likely. And uh, the LHC, maybe uh, the Large Hadron Collider at CERN, may be very close to uh, finding some of the predicted uh, particles of string theory. So you know, like we've got, you know, we're we're a lot closer in the scientific area, and we should be still looking at this. You know. Just because a theory is unfalsifiable at the time, or just because it may appear to have certain flaws in it, does not necessarily mean that we shouldn't be researching it. And the problem is, is that the the bulk of previous argument doesn't seem to do that. And um, we need a new generation of skeptical argument and a skeptic to go out there with further technical details to you know to help people you know to get, help people understand in better depth what's actually going on. And then on top of that, to say this is where we're at now. Yes, there are flaws in here. Yes, there's a lot of work that we need answered. So we need to test a lot of this just to find out if these uh, concerns are true or if they are. You know, then uh, then how do we amend this theory to take them into account, or do we scrap the theory and even start looking on something new? You know, but we. You know, we need to start looking at, you know, we need to foster encouragement in research. We don't need to be saying, um, you know, this is it. You know, we've already proven this. You know, like there's, you know, there's not really too much to it, which seems to be what the overall uh, general, um, you know, which oh, seems to be what the overall general level of skeptical argument is uh, right now, at least at the popular level. Like we need, we need more, 
you know, we need more um, in-depth argument. We need less critical thinking fallacy-based uh, argument. And we need, um, you know, we need more enticement for people to actually look at the latest research, try to understand it in fuller depth. And then, uh, you know, and for science students or for some people going into the sciences, we need to be able to do this in such a way that we uh, encourage them to further research these areas. So this way we can either find if these things are true or if not, we can find out new variables. Anyway, that's my rant. Hope that helped. See ya.